that uh, morning? He was translating 1 Corinthians 13. The love chapter. The love chapter. Uh, he had come to those verses that say, uh, if I give my body. Really? To be burned. And uh, I think, well, he had already given himself <laughs> previously. But this I, was the I tell ultimate. people he had he had already died <laughs> died to self. Uh, he was right where God wanted him and doing exactly what God wanted him to do. And um, there's something you didn't share with the group on Saturday night that really stood out to me. Page 27 of your book. God, as you were sitting in that dreadful waiting room in the hospital, God put his hand on your shoulder. Do you remember what he said? Yes. He said, uh, the way, Grace, the way that you respond to all of this is very important. And those uh, words kept banging around in my head. <laughs> now, I want to say just, I mean, how traumatic this is. You say the image would come back and you'd, you'd just have to go and retch for weeks. I mean, this was so gory, so horrible. You couldn't read scripture. Uh, you, you had scriptures posted around the house, which did help. Um, you were nearly evicted. You were ne nearly ousted from the country. There were a lot of really difficult chapters, but God was doing something. I think in the next picture, we have you visiting the uh, man who killed your husband. Uh, he was first in a mental hospital, in the mental ward of the hospital, and then in jail. And you went regularly to visit him. And he's actually, I, I, I had a hard time putting this together, because he's sitting outside the jail and actually helping you do translation work. And he would help, he would write hymns. I mean, he, he just didn't just come back to a right mind. He, he came back to the Lord, it seems. Yeah, one day uh, I had I had taken scripture portions over to him to check. He was a very brilliant man, a very keen on in understanding his language. So we would take when we would go to visit him, we would take translation with us and ask him to check it. And one day as he gave me back the, the passages that he had already checked, and I was giving him some new material to check, he, he said, well, do you want the songs also? And I said, oh, I wasn't aware that I had given you songs to check. And he said, oh, no, you didn't. He said, these are new songs that I've written since I've been here. Mm. And uh, so he took out his notebook and started singing various songs, His own new hymns. songs that he had written. And one of those songs was Amazing Grace. Wow. <laughs> Grace, an amazing, you have to tell it in a capsule, but I asked you to bring these shoes today because your son was in a memorial service in the U.S. and the pastor gave a fascinating challenge. Can you tell us that quickly? Well, the pastor ended the the memorial service by holding up a pair of shoes and uh, showing them around to the whole audience, the congregation. And he said, who's going to take Edmund Fabian's place now that he has gone to glory? And he set the shoes up on the platform. And Jonathan said, Mom, I got up from my pew and walked down the aisle, went up onto the platform, and put my feet into those shoes. I think God is telling me to come back and help you finish up the translation for the Nabok people, for which Daddy expended his life. And indeed, Jonathan and his wife and baby did come. Yes. And a great day. Oh, what is the date? August 14th, 1998, five years after Edmund's death. A great celebration. 3,000 people in the pouring rain. Yeah. We have one picture of you with the wife of the man who killed your husband, who incidentally, uh, actually, this, is this, this isn't part of the celebration, or is it? 
Is this yes, the same day. Mm -hmm. It is. And take note of the headgear. Take note of what they're wearing on their heads. And now the the picture of you, Grace. That's your son, by the way. Uh, now this uh, this man is the uh, a replacement translator, actually. Yes, Zumbek, uh, who uh, who was an invaluable help on that wonderful day. And the woman I mentioned, the wife of the man who killed your husband. She called me to the center of this large sports arena, uh, sports field uh, where these thousands of people were gathered. And she said, we have never uh, performed our, our society's reconciliation ceremony with you. But she said, now that God speaks Nabak, <laughs> And, uh, I have to reach the God speaking Nabuk. This would be it here, right? <laughs> yeah. Then, um, then she said, we don't want to be sad anymore. We want to rejoice. And so she said, I have a special question to ask you. Would you consider being my sister? And of course, <laughs> that was a very touching moment for me because I had been white person at first. That's that was what they the called you. That's what they called me. Then I had been white woman when they figured out that indeed I was a woman. And then, um, and then I became fourth born. And, uh, Which is how now, they called one another according to their birth order. <laughs> birth order. Not by a name. And so then when I said that I would be an honor to be her sister, sister. then she put this uh, beautiful heirloom piece on my head. Show us how it's worn, Grace. It's, this is uh, worth hundreds of dollars. Woven in a very special design and uh, is placed on the head like this. And uh, then it is worn as a sign of wealth. Um, and of course, uh, for me, it was, uh, you know, the sign of the remorse that they felt for what had happened. So much uh, healing and love and forgiveness. And I know when you go to, you were in a church last night, and I'm just, I'm not going to, don't worry, I won't roll the whole thing out. But you had this going down the aisle of the church. 2,078 language groups do not have a single word in God's love letter. On and on it goes. And you've been back from the field for several years. Yes, I came back in 2005. But you're challenging people to come and fill the shoes That's that are right. waiting for this challenge. You need to read the whole story. We've just given you a little taste of outrageous grace. And you can get your copy at gracefabian.com. Grace, you're home to Pennsylvania. Yes. Uh, I hope you'll come back again. Thank okay. you so much for the wonderful example of your life, your faith. Love never fails. That's right. <laughs> you know it personally. <laughs> I hope you know it too. Remember our phone lines are always available if you need a faith lift.